have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, thou morning. Amen. Just let loose and the Holy Ghost use you. Amen. As we invite our precious brother Matongo to come and open up the word of prayer. Amen. Let us yield to him this day. Amen. We want to see him moving among us. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, your children have reported for duty. We remember, Lord, when they were in the wilderness with Moses, two million people, when they went to Goshen, they would say, they would say to their neighbors, we are going to heaven. And today our brother Paul tells us we are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. We are in heaven right now. Because our theophanies were created before the foundation of the world. We are a dual being, eternal in all essence. We are thankful this morning, Lord. As the brother is sung, have thine own way with us. We are here, Lord. Even as the prophet has told us, we must become the property of God. To be used by God in any way that he wants to use us. And let's be willing, Lord, to surrender all. Surrender our thinking, surrender our brains, surrender our bodies, surrender our service, surrender everything before him so he can use us. So I'm praying, Lord, especially this morning, Lord, that you may meet with it every and every heart, Lord. Move in the pews, Lord, and bless your people. They have been here from Sunday, Lord. Now they are going to Sunday to Sunday. Lord, I don't know any other church that is doing the same. You said you bless those, Lord, that are willing to come before thee. 
with clear hearts, Lord God Almighty. So I'm praying this morning. May you pass by as you did for Zacchaeus. May you pass by through every heart and give us, Lord, according to our needs. We ask Jehovah Jireh to come this morning for those who are in need. We ask for Jehovah Shammah to visit those that need him. We ask for Jehovah Tzid Kenu to visit his children for he knoweth our needs. We ask Jehovah Shammah Lord to come and Jehovah Rapha for those that need healing this morning. Lord, we cast out every evil spirit, Lord God Almighty, that we might have come with, Lord, from our own homes. Let it not find space in this building, Lord, in the church of the living God, so that when we go from this place, Lord, we will say it was good to be at church. Lord, put the preacher behind the cross. Let him speak the oracles of God. Let him speak the word that thus saith the Lord. Let him speak to us, Lord God Almighty, that we may repent when we need to. Let him encourage us, Lord, if we need encouragement. Those who have their hands hanging down, Lord, discouraged by all sorts. Lord, as we live in a very terrible country, Lord, a terrible world. But Lord God Almighty, as we said, we are in heaven right now. And we know that you are here. You like the church, your prophet said, you are always there. The Holy Ghost is always there waiting at church. So we know there's more than two or three here. So Father, meet with us, Lord, this morning. Take the preacher and put him aside. Take the song leader and put him aside. Let the angels sing from the oracles of his heart, Lord, so that we may be blessed this morning. As the, the singer said, have thine own way with us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we surrender all. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The porter wanted to mold you this morning. Amen. So what you have to do, just relax and give yourself to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's coming down, down. It's coming down, down. Yes, the glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have His way, the glory of the Lord is coming down. Yes, it's coming down, down. Just 
to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I look over Jordan and what did I see? All oh, coming to carry me one end of My love coming to carry me one Swing Lord Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just be tired of it. Amen. They were all in the... Hallelujah. Swing low, swing chariot. Amen. <laughs> swing low, swing chariot, coming for to carry me. Amen. 
move the title offering place. Amen. Let's sing. I know it was the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood.
Lord Jesus, we thank you for every love gift that has been offered by your dear children. We thank you for this morning. May you bless each one, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in a special way. Lord, may you continue to bless us this morning, even as we expect your word. We give glory, praise, and honor unto thee. In thy name, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, believing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many are still happy? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing the blood of Christ, my Lord. There is victory. Hallelujah. Claim your victory today. Hallelujah. Not tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. So there is a victory in the blood of Christ, my Lord. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. There is a victory. Yes, there is a victory. There is a victory. There is a victory. Oh, in the blood of Christ, my Lord. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. There is a victory. Oh, there is a victory. There is a victory. There is a victory. In the blood of Christ, my Lord. Be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. We have got a few specials. Hey, Brother Oswell, come at the victory. Amen. There is a victory. There is victory. There is victory in the blood of. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, saints. Join us as, as we sing. Hallelujah. There is one in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Muno sam isam ishe jesu mandire gerera zitema jangu mandi baba tiza no mwe ya wenyu muno sam Shamisa, oh, Ishe, Jesu, Mandire, Gerera, Zite, Oh, Mandi, Baba, Tiza, Mandi, Baba, Tiza, No, Mwe, Ya, Wenyu, Muna, Shamisa, Jesu, Na, Ete, Wane, Bina, Ete, Wane, Bina, Oh, 
akamurobera pakorokota apo akamurobera pakorokota apo akamurobera kavakutweshe onda iziwane pinyasa onda iziwane pinyasa the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, God bless you, my brother. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Amen. Hallelujah. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cry. I'm singing glory to you, singing glory. Oh 
Special from Sister Grace Harrison. She can come forward. Glory to His name. When I'm in need, I call on the Lord, and He hears me, yes, He helps me, He is faithful and true, won't forget it all. Oh, my companion, my best friend, the only true God, there's no one greater, a wonderful Savior. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, our God is tremendous, His strength never fails us, He'll go through the fire just to save us sinners, yes, He is almighty, He sends His angels to guide me, there is no stone too powerful, our God can Jehovah Nisi, the great and full star, God Almighty, who fight your battles, oh yes, He will stand for you. Your victory will come, not the way you think it should, but my great Jehovah, just like separate thoughts, just stay in your possession and watch the miraculous come into action. God is tremendous, His strength never faileth. He'll go through the fire just to save the sinners. Yes, He is almighty. He sends His angels to guide me. There is no storm too powerful. Our God cannot handle. Our God in simplicity revealed in you and me. Came down from His glory and gave us a victory. The greatest of stories. the Lord. He hears you. He can help you. He is faithful and true. Don't forget his own. Your companion, your best friend, the only true God. There's no one greater, a wonderful Savior. Jesus, the Lion of Judah. Our God is tremendous, His strength never faileth. To go through the fire just to save the sinners. Yes, He is almighty, He sent His angels to guide me. There is no something too powerful, our God cannot handle. Our God in simplicity revealed in you and me. Came back from His glory and gave us the victory. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for the coming of the word, let's sing, Father, let the fire fall. How many the fire want the fire fall this morning? Hallelujah. It's the atmosphere that brings the, the results. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, let the fire fall. Oh, Father, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the pen be called the fire. Father, let the fire. Fire for. Father, let the fire. Fire for. Oh, let the fire for. Let the fire for. Let the pen be called the fire. Father, let the fire. Father, let the fire. Fire for. Father, let the fire. You let the pain they call the fire for Father let the fire the fire for Father let the fire for Oh let the fire for let the fire for let the pain they call the fire for Father let the fire for Father let the fire fire for Oh let the fire for Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing it prayerfully. Amen. Just invite the Lord in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, me near the cross, no there precious found in free to all the Oh uh-huh. 
Santa Cruz Ay Cruz Ay Cruz Ay Let us pray, each one in your own way. Just thank God that in the cross, in the cross, I will believe until I find my rest across the river. Let us pray. Dear God, we want to thank you for bringing us here this morning. We thank you for the songs of Zion that have been sung, the specials that have been given. Lord, our hearts are ready to hear God's word this morning. Have thy own way. Like Elijah on Mount Carmel, Lord, after I had laid the altar, after I had presented himself, after I had invited the king, after I had invited all the elders of Israel, Lord God Almighty, lay the altar. And he say, Lord, I've done this at your command. Lord, may you take over. May you do the rest this morning. Lord, we say the same this morning we've come. We've availed ourselves. We've presented ourselves before the altar of God. May you just take over. Uh, take over the minister, take over the preaching of the word, take over everything that shall be done and said, and may you get glory and honor to yourself. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. May be seated. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to appreciate all those who are here, those who are physically here, and those that are streaming. We'd like to welcome the visitors in our midst. Um, don't know whether all the visitors have been introduced but we want to appreciate everyone uh, see brother Amos uh, come with another brother God bless you uh, God bless you the brothers from Derby amen God bless you see two brothers from Derby there where well, brother Juma is ministering amen God bless you I see my friend brother Maregere and our precious sister Maregere and the family God bless you amen uh, who else? I haven't seen any other new people. But if the, oh yeah, uh, is it Reggie from the is working with Sister Esther, uh, Sister Cheza? Oh God bless you. Is it Reggie? Is it Reggie's? Reggie. Oh God bless you. Welcome in our church this morning. Amen. Anybody else I've missed? Okay, we are happy to be here this morning. Happy Easter to you all. I'm sure you're having a great time in the Lord. We are, I'm being thoroughly blessed so far. So this morning, we have changed our preacher a little bit because the minister who was supposed to come in the afternoon is not able. So we have asked Brother Shadrick Juma to stand in the gap this morning and Brother who preached again in the afternoon, Pastor Kufakwemba. So there's been some changes. So this morning, we are happy to have Brother Juma, one of our local ministers, who is ministering in Derby, is laboring in Derby, is laboring, laboring in Derby, a uh, virgin ground, virgin city. We must go to other cities to preach the gospel. We must not stay in one place, we must go to the villages. Jesus Christ says, we must go to other places. Amen, and Brother Juma is doing the same. I'll just read the scripture. I'm just blessed uh, when the song leader sang the very songs. I'll read you verse, just verse 20, uh, Matthew 20, verse uh, 28. It just blessed my heart. Matthew 20, 28 this morning. You can just put it in. And it said, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister to give his life a ransom for many. That's what we're celebrating this morning. Jesus Christ came to give his life a ransom for many. In other words, a payment for their imprisonment so that they can be set free, so that they can be enjoy uh, freedom, that they can enjoy the freedom of salvation. He didn't come to be ministered. That's why he came. Well, he was stripped. He was beaten. He was put on the cross to pay, to be that, to give his life as a ransom for many. 
And I like what St. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, verse 15. You can just read there. Amen. He came to die for us, and this is why we celebrate Easter. We want to thank God for the finished work at Calvary. Amen. He did something which no man could do. He paid the debt which he didn't owe. Um, uh, Romans 5, verse 15 says, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And the phrase, uh, verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one man, judgment came upon all men to, condemn, to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the one free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Did you hear that? Therefore, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. This morning, I've got good news for you. Happy Easter. Somebody came and paid. There was a ransom found for you. You are condemned to death. You are condemned to go to hell. You are condemned to be eternally separated from God. But through Jesus Christ at the cross, he came to undo the sin which was brought by one man, Adam, so that you can have freedom. And today you are free. To whom the Son of Man makes free, he is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Also, I just forgot to uh, remember uh, Sister Janet and Brother Lars. They lost their grandma. Uh, on the PowerPoint, on the email, there are some pictures I put. Can you just put the picture of their grandma who went home to be with the Lord in, um, in uh, Namibia? And they are burying her tomorrow. I think they had a memorial yesterday. Just put some pictures on the email there uh, of the church. Uh, I've just put some pictures uh, just so that you remember. We identify ourselves with those who are mourning, those who are uh, crying. We just want to pray that God comfort them this Easter. And to know that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, will not die, but have eternal life. Do you have it? Amen. They put it. They just wanted them to show it. Uh, so we remember Brother Lance and Sister Janet. That's uh, grandma for Sister Janet. Sister Janet, stand up. Uh, this is our sister. That's her grandma who has gone home to be with the Lord. So just remember the family. Uh, that's her there. This is a great woman. Um, Another picture of her. I think there's a few pictures there. Yeah, that's her there. She has gone home. Here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Another one. Okay. Just remember them in prayer that the Lord come for them this Easter as they are mourning and bearing one. Amen. But we believe she will not remain in the grave because one paid a ransom. There was a ransom found for her. One man came to be the ransom for many. Even our grandma, one man came to be a ransom for her. Uh, show the other picture, the last one, yeah. So in remembrance to those who are mourning, let's just offer a word of prayer. Dear God, as the church of the living God, we remember our loved one who has gone home to be with the Lord. We pray for the family, the bereaved family, as they are mourning at this time, that we may comfort them. Be with our precious sister Janet here, her mom, her brother, Lars, and their sister. Be with them, Lord Jesus. Father, comfort them. They have not been able to go to bury her, but Lord, they are just remembering those who are doing the work there. Father, I just pray that you may bring the Holy Ghost comfort and to realize that she will not remain there. She will be up. When the trumpet of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise up. She will rise up again at the uh, first resurrection. Father, we thank you as we continue with our service. Be with us this morning. Bless Brother Joma and anoint him for the morning service. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We are now in for the preaching of the word. Amen. God wants to make you what he wants, him, what he wants you to be. Amen. We will just sing, uh, can I trouble you, sister? That song, the potter wants to, you are in the potter's house. 
That was the first song I think brother mentioned when he came here. We are in the Potter's house this morning, this Easter. We want to be met. We want him to remold us. We want him to remold us. How many want to be remolded? Amen. Amen. We are in the Potter's house this morning. Jeremiah thought, go to the Potter's house. See how it is. He saw the Potter making a vessel of clay. And then he looked at it. He wasn't quite happy with the shape, with the, with, with, with the way it was. He just crushed it. And he remolded it again. And this morning, this Easter, we want to be crushed. This is our seventh day of meetings for this Easter. And we want something to be happening this morning. Somebody be remolded. Somebody be remolded again. Because we're in the potter's house. Amen. Hallelujah. The potter wants to make you again. Maybe you've been broken. Maybe you've been wounded. Maybe you've got scars. The potter wants to mold you again this morning. Hallelujah. We are in the potter's house. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Uh, I haven't practiced it, so just listen to the words. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life. Hallelujah. Dreams and visions shattered, you are broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Case your situation has turned upside down, and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The part of wants to put you back to again in case your situation has turned upside down and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground well you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in the part won't to put you back together again Oh, the part wants to put you back together again You are broken Stop by the Oh. 
Brother Juma comes, that's exactly what he wants to do to you this Easter. He wants to put you back together again. After Easter, you'll be together again. After the last meeting tomorrow, you'll be together again. The porter wants to put you back together again. Brother Juma, you can come. God bless you, saints. Greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? I always repeat it when you are coming to the house of the Lord, come, oh, be happy always. Because if you are not happy, you will not receive the blessing. Amen. That's why I always tell the couples in Derby that whenever you are coming to church, don't offend each other at home. Because it will be difficult for you to say amen when you are sitting there. Because your blessing comes through saying amen. amen. Your blessing comes through hallelujahs. Amen. amen. Remember the prophet when I was talking about last time we talked about Samuel. That Samuel was, God was talking to Samuel but God was just calling his name. Amen. And God did not move further to talk to Samuel until Samuel responded. Amen. So if you want God to talk to you this afternoon, amen. you must have to respond. Amen. That is where your blessing is. Amen. But the devil will tell you, don't worry, no, it's, you're tired. Tell the devil you are lying. Amen. How many are going to tell the devil that they are lies? That I didn't come here to play around. I came here to get a blessing from God. I did not come here just to go back the same. I want to go back different. If I was sick, I need to leave my sickness here. If I had my problems, I need to leave my problems here. Are there people like that in this church? Who say, Lord, I don't want to leave the same. I can't come in the presence of God and go out the same. This is the presence of God. Where burdens are lifted. Say, come unto me and I'll give you rest. You might be heavy laden this afternoon. Let me tell you something. You've come to the right place. This is the place where you can get those burdens lifted. This is a place. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Let me just see. How I many I help you again in the house of the Lord? I will do it like brother. How I many I help you? How I many receive received their Good Friday blessing? Let me just say this. Brothers, <laughs> you might have loved maybe think that pastor was just speaking here. Uh, he's just a man. But let me tell you something about Paul. Paul was smitten blind by the pit of fire. And he fell down to the ground. And he said, Lord, what can I do to receive my sight? God said, go in the city. It shall be told you what you need to do. And you might have been praying for a wife. And you were expecting God to come from heaven. God came from the pulpit. And say, brother, you better hurry up. Don't delay, my brother. Hey, man, Romeo will come and snatch you away in secret. You better start running. Because there are Romeos around. Romeo comes in secret. Like when the pastor said, you know, there is somebody in, somewhere in Africa there watching that sister. And you are just, you know, make you, I'll, I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you, you know. Brother, don't be a sloth. Hey, man. Maybe you're thinking that God is going to bring the come from heaven with the wings and say, brother, there is, uh, he comes from the pulpit. This is exactly where Hannah received a baby. Hannah received a baby from the pulpit. Eli told her, receive your blessing. And she received a blessing right there. And when the preacher was saying, brother, go and talk to that sister. She is not going to reject you. Be rest assured. I can hear some brothers who are there. I know, my, I know who I'm, to, I'm also, I know some brothers. Don't wait. Don't waste your time. Don't regret. Because one of these days you come crying. Don't come crying to the pastor. You better move now. Move now, brother. Go and talk to the sister. Brother, hallelujah. Maybe, maybe people are just thinking it's a, maybe just a play. It's a serious business. If you've been praying at home, and maybe you think God is going to come as an angel to tell you, brother, just talk to the sister. I like what pastor said. There are many beautiful girls around here. And our brothers are just moving, you know, it's okay. I know, no, no. Brother, it's time to make a move. Hey, man, it's time to make a move. Go and approach that sister. I know people are just saying, what is this brother talking about? But these are the realities. Hey, man, say so she will reject you. She will not reject you after this message. Pastor said, we will send them to ask you out. 
So what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me, brother? Make a move, my brother. I believe that he, he that has got an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When we come to the church, the house of God, that is where you receive your blessing. You are not going to receive your wife out there, but you receive your wife right in the church. When the minister was preaching, it was the anointing of God telling you that, brother, you need to start making a move. Maybe you say, ah, I need to buy a car first. You buy the house together. You buy the car together. Don't wait until you buy. You can buy together. What if you take 10 years to buy? God bless you, say it. You buy the house together. You buy the car together. So make a move, my brother. I don't know why I've got to say that. I've got to say what the minister says. God bless you, saying. Let's just stand up to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your grace. We just want to thank you for your mercy. Father, you are the living God, the creator, and the savior. And Father, I praise your name this afternoon, this morning. And I pray, Father God Almighty, that you may forgive us all of our sins. Anything we've ever thought or imagined in our hearts, may you forgive us, Lord. Father, those sin of omissions, Lord God Almighty, and many things that we neglect to do, pray, Father, that you may forgive us. So many times we're in church, but our thoughts are somewhere else. Please, Lord, have mercy upon us. And Father, we intercede and pray for each and every one. Lord God Almighty, that you may look beyond all our sins and all our iniquities, so that you may hear our prayer. Father, we don't want anything to hinder, Lord, your visitation. Lord, as I'm standing here, Lord, let me, take me aside. Father, you know this was just an emergency, but I just believe, Father, you must have a reason. For all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. As I pray this afternoon, this morning, Lord, I just pray, I submit myself into your hands. I'm asking you to have absolute sway and absolute control. Heavenly Father, I know you're God who can move somebody from their north. I might have my little thoughts here. But I know, Father, you can move people totally away from the knots. Heavenly Father, you can minister to your people in such a way that I will not even have to touch my knots. Lord, I just submit myself and I'm asking you to have absolute control and absolute sway. May you start with us and end with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brother, do you hear that? Let me just repeat this again. Brother, do you hear that? You better start making a move. Amen. You better start. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who said praise the Lord? Hallelujah, brother. You better start making a move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, before I go, I just want to say something here uh, that is not relevant to the message I want to speak about. I just want to encourage somebody. Who just, somebody I want to say something just for one minute. Or maybe somebody who's sick. Amen. Maybe somebody's going through a lot. The Bible said Mary and Martha went to Jesus. And say, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So you can understand that sickness has got nothing to do with God's love. Amen. Have you sick? Many people say because you're sick, so God is not with you. That's a lie of the devil. Amen. So whatever you're going through, you might be stuck in a hospital. You might have some terrible disease. Let me just tell you this afternoon that it does not mean that you're not a child of God. It does not mean that God doesn't love you. God still loves you. Because here they said, him thou lovest is sick. So which means that people that God loves also get sick. So don't ever listen to the devil. Job was a man loved by God, but he was sick. Until his very own wife did not seem to love him. That's what the prophet said. He said the wife did not seem to love him because of the sickness that he had. So you can imagine what, how sick he was. That even his friends came to look at him. They could not talk to him. Because they could see how sick the man was. Amen. And they tried to accuse him that you are a secret sinner. But he was not a secret sinner. He was a saint loved by God. So no matter what you are going through, don't let the devil tell you that is because God doesn't love you. Amen. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. So I don't care whatever you're going through. Don't ever let the devil whisper in your ears that God doesn't love you. God loves you. Say, brother, I have lost some money in my bank. God still loves you. Lord, I've still got debts and like mountains. God still loves you. It does not matter what you're going through. That does not show that God is not with you. Say, brother, I have many miscarriages. Let me tell you something. God still loves you. Say, brother, I'm struggling in my home with my marriage. Let me tell you something. God still loves you. It does not matter what you're going through. 
The love of God is elective love. That's why he said he loved this man, but this man went sick. So don't worry, whatever you're going through. You might have been from hospital to hospital. Let me tell you something. It does not matter. God still loves you. Hallelujah. I hope somebody's got help with this. Because I feel it in my spirit. I want, just wanted to encourage someone. And I believe the word of God is a design of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. There must be somebody who's going through a lot. So don't worry, brother and sister. Amen. As we put our scripture. I don't need your prayers this afternoon. Amen. Brother has already prayed for me, but I still need your prayers. If we can put our scripture, look, John, um, Revelation chapter 16. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the better of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vow into the thin, in the air. And there came a great voice out of the heaven, temple of heaven, from the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not seen since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. You may be seated, saints. I mean, I'm praying for me. Amen. Amen. So what are we seeing in this scripture? We are seeing the dragon, the false prophet, the beast, the spirit of devils, the king of the earth uniting together. In other words, we are seeing religious powers, political powers, and demon power uniting together. Amen. The beast and the dragon, the false prophet, which is religious powers. The spirit of the devils, demon power. The kings of the earth, political powers. And these are all uniting before the second coming of Jesus. In other words, we are seeing a uniting just before the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We are seeing a, 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 a uniting of religious powers, political powers, and, 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 and demonic powers just before the coming of Christ. In other words, when you begin to see these things taking place, it's telling you, that we are very close to the rapture. Amen. When you begin to see these things uniting, you must know that we are very close to the rapture. That's why the prophet preached a message, uniting time and sign. That anything before it takes off, there is a uniting together. And he said, look at the ducks before they leave the country where they were born to go to another. They get together first. And let me tell you, my brother, sister, before the rapture takes place, the bride of Christ has got to come together. We've got to come together. That's why we thank God for sending Malachi 4 with a shout. Under the shout, the bride is being united. Hallelujah. And when the bride is united together, brother, look out. The rapture is taking place. That's why the ducks, before they can fly out, they've got to come together. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something about the ducks. The prophet said they don't just unite together but they unite around their leader because he knows where he's going. And let me tell you something, brother. If you and me have got to go to the heaven, you've got to be united with the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, I don't care how righteous you are. I don't care how many times you go to church, how much you call yourself a message believer. Without the Holy Ghost, there is no going over there. Amen. Amen. Truth shall set you free. There is a uniting time. Just before the coming of Christ. That's why the prophet says, that's why there is United Nations. World Health Organization. That's why there is NATO. Everything is just uniting. The prophet says, it's the spirit of the age. It's a uniting of things. Everything you go, everything is uniting. That's why Finland and all these things are trying to join NATO. You go to Russia. Russia are trying to join with, together with, the, with, the, with, in, with the Iraq and, and another one. Join it together. It's the spirit of the age. Why? Because it's the rapture time. Oh, brother, I don't know about you, brother, sister, but I'm looking forward to the rapture. I am looking forward to the rapture. Let me ask you, brother, are you looking forward to the rapture? Aren't you tired of this world? Aren't you tired of the disappointments? 
Aren't you tired of the heartaches? Brother, there is coming a place where there will be no, no sorrow anymore. Hallelujah. So we are seeing a uniting of these three powers. And the prophet is the age of uniting. Everything uniting. United Nations. World Council of Churches. And let me tell you something. Why is all those things are uniting? The bride is also uniting. And she's uniting with the word. The word under the shout. That's why we thank God for Malachi 4. He said, behold, I'll send you Elijah with a shout. What is a shout? It's a message. Gathering the bride together. Watch for, for the takeoff. Brother, when you see Malachi 4, the rapture is about to take place. Hallelujah. It's uniting time. The prophet says countries are uniting. Nations, United Nations, World Health Organizations, NATO, Commonwealth, European Union. Brother, what are you seeing when you are seeing that? Just before the rapture, there is going to be uniting. Even the tears are uniting in the world kinds of churches. Even the wheat is also uniting. What are they uniting? The tears. God is going to burn them up. What about the, the weeds? The, the real seeds. God is going to put them in the corner. This is where we are, brother, sister. I hope you're understanding. So you can learn a lot by watching nature. He said, those ducks, before they take off, they gather together. Even the bees, they gather around the mother bee. Amen. Just before taking off. And this is why I want to say, people, let's unite together. Amen. God is not going to bring the rapture until we are united. Look at Mary and Martha. When Jesus was coming to resurrect Lazarus, he did not go to Lazarus until and unless all Mary and Martha had to become one. He had to unite them together first. And after they came together, then he said, let us go and wake him up. So the bride must unite. Let's put a quote there. Amen. You see, the nations have the the United Nations, they are uniting. The churches are uniting together. What is it all showing? It's showing that Christ and the bride is fixing to unite. That's what he's speaking of. All these shadows of things are showing the positive coming. What are they showing? The coming of the Messiah. Put another one. I just want to finish with this and I want to go what I'm saying. Notice. Is that right? I think, I think I've lost the other one. Yes, what I'm saying. Let me just go quickly to the other one. Amen. Let me just give me a second, saints, please. I can't find it here. What is he saying here? Let me see. Now, you see where we are living. The uniting time. When we see these things being united, oh, why we fail to see those things? You can look in here in the scripture and see where he promised it. What he would do. Now, we see it coming to pass. We see in the church that he promised to do. We see it coming to pass. We see the nations uniting together. The isms uniting together. The church is uniting together. It's a uniting time. It's the hour of uniting. That is the spirit of the age. We've got to unite. Everything you talk about has got to be organized. If in the government won't receive it. What is the prophet talking about here? Uniting time before the coming of Christ. Uniting of the powers before the coming of Christ. Put the other one because I want to just wanted people to catch this. Notice, they are right now uniting. You say, Brother Barnum, is that true? They are coming to the battle of Armageddon. Exactly what they will do. See? And they are uniting for that right now. That's why we've got United Nations and everything we have. The Western world is uniting against the Eastern world. Communism and so forth. It's all uniting together. The church are uniting together. Everything seems to be uniting. Uniting themselves together. We see that. Also, while all this uniting of the nation, these signs, national signs, we see out there in the world, ethnic in diverse places, different things uniting. Bringing the world together. Bringing the people together, all the churches together. And while all this is uniting, been going on, there is another uniting going on. Amen. That's what I want to point to now. God is uniting his bride. She is coming together 
from the east and the west and the north and the south. There is a uniting time. And that's on right now. What is she uniting for? The rapture. Amen. That is why we are uniting. The rapture of the church is about to take place. Brother, if you are looking forward to stay on this earth, I don't know about you, but me, I'm looking forward to go up there in the city four square where there is no sorrow, where there is no worry. I am tired of living in this unfaithful world. I'm looking forward to that place. If you are looking to live here, when the bride has left this earth, it's going to be a horrible place to stay. Amen. Once God takes away the last one, you cannot live on this earth anymore. It will be unbearable to live. That's why we are looking forward to that place over there. God is getting it ready. Yes, sir. Uniting what she is. What is she uniting with? With the word. For all heaven and earth will pass away. But my word shall never pass away. She is uniting herself with that, says the Lord. Regardless of what any denomination or anybody says, she is uniting herself. She is getting ready. She is the bride. And she is uniting herself with the bridegroom. And the bridegroom is the word. I want the people to catch this background. Is I want to go to what I want to say now. Now I want you to understand here why all this uniting was in progress. Verse 13, between verse 13 and 16, God injects something there. And this is where I'm going to get my title. He says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments on, lest he walk naked and see his shame. What was he talking? He was talking about his second coming. And my message this afternoon is, Blessed, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments on, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Hallelujah. Jesus was talking about his second coming. And if he's talking about his second coming, you and me must be interested in that. Amen. We must show excitement when God talks about it. We must learn from the disciples. When they heard Jesus talking about his coming in Matthew 24, they did not keep quiet. They said, Master, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Brother, they were interested in knowing. And let me tell you, brother, we've got to be interested in knowing when the Lord is coming. We've got to be interested in knowing what time is coming. If the disciples were interested, and if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he expects you and me to be interested in his coming. Hallelujah. We should be interested. Hallelujah. When people hear about the coming of the Lord, are, many of them are sad. But brother, we should not be sad. We should be rejoicing. Because the coming of the Lord, he's going to take his bride away. Hallelujah, he's going to steal his bride like Romeo told Juliet. He's going to take you away from this pest house. Aren't you tired of this pest house? Aren't you tired of this pest house? This body is not made for there, brother. This body is going back to the dust. But there is another one that is waiting for you, brother. I am looking forward to going over there. I am looking forward to that city for square. I am looking forward to go up there. We should show his interest. The disciples, when Jesus was talking about his second coming before he even died, and they said, no, we cannot just let it go. Master, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of the coming? End of the world of the world. They were interested. Are the believers interested in the coming of the Lord? I'm not here to say, receive your car today. I'm not, say, I'm not here to say, receive your house today. I'm not here to say, receive your Rolex today. I'm here to say, brother, the rapture of the church. Get ready, brother. The rapture of the church is about to take place. You can have your money, but money will finish. You can have your car, but car will finish one day. But when you have the Holy Ghost, you've got eternal life. Hallelujah. I'm not here to tell you, brother, yes, it's wonderful to have a house. It's wonderful to have money, but there is a season for that. And this is not the season. Because every uniting time has taken place. It's a time of the rapture, saints. It's a time to wake up and get our lamps trimmed and clear. Hallelujah. It's a time to get right with God. And you mothers, this is the time you've got to apply the token on your children. We've got, where are the supporters here? Where are the supporters here? Zipporahs, 
who are not interested in uncircumcised children in the house. Hallelujah. She didn't want any uncircumcised children in the house. She said to, my, to Moses, you are a bloody man. Moses was not excited or interested about his children's circumcision. And he was busy doing whatever he was doing. But not that woman, Zipporah. Are there any Zipporahs here? Are there any mothers here? Who are Zipporahs? Who are contender about the circumcision of their children? By the Holy Ghost. That little woman. Brother, that little woman. She said, Moses was always busy. Not concerned about her children. And she said, she went to look, give him an eye. You. You. You bloody man. She took the rock and circumcised the child. Brother Moses was supposed to know. That was not the time to play. It was the time to circumcise his child. For very soon the judgment angel was about to fall. Are there any supporters here? Are there any sister Hattie's here? Mothers. Mothers who are concerned about their children. Mothers who are concerned about their children. Are those women here? Hallelujah. Mothers who are not waiting for their husbands to pray with the children. Mothers who say like the widow woman. The creditors are coming over my children. She was, she went to the prophet. My, the creditors are after my children. She was content. And she was a widow woman. And let me say, are there mothers here? Like Zipporah. Are there mothers here? Like the widow woman. Who say, I don't care what I've got to eat. I want my children to receive the Holy Ghost. I want my children to be saved. Are there mothers like that here? If mothers are like that, let me stay. Here to stand up. Stand up, mothers who are concerned about their children. Stand up, mothers who are concerned about their children. I don't care what I've got to eat. I don't care what I've got to go through. I want my children to be saved. Hallelujah. The supporters. The supporters. They are not going to wait for their husbands. They are going to take responsibility of their children's affection. Where are those mothers? Where are those mothers here? Where are the supporters? Where are the supporters? Who don't want children, who want circumcised in the house. They are not throwing them out. But they are doing all they can. To make sure that those children are circumcised by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Where are the mothers? Let me tell you, receive your desire, my mothers. Receive your desire, mothers. Receive your desire. Let your children receive the Holy Ghost. Let your children receive the Holy Ghost. Mothers like Auntie Jemima. Hallelujah. She did not want a child to die unsaved. She said, prophet, I want my children to be saved. She waited outside of that building from 3 a.m. She was waiting because her child was about to die. She was not concerned about the sickness, but she wanted that child to be saved. Where are those mothers? Where are those mothers who don't care about iPhones, who don't care about all these play games, but they want their children to be saved? If you are here, mothers, receive your desire this afternoon. May those little children come back to you. I don't care wherever they are. I don't care how life they are living. I am giving your children. Receive your children. God is still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I don't care, brother. Mothers. That woman, she woke up in the morning. 3 a.m. she was outside. And it was raining. Because she had a son who was about to die. Brother, if it was some other mothers, they would say, okay, let's look for final insurance. It's okay. But not that mother. She wanted a child. Saved. She wanted a daughter saved. I mean, she wanted a son saved. And I'm saying, brother, if you need your children saved, and you hung us so badly for it, let me tell you something. God can even ground the airline. God can even ground the airline. He did it in the prophet's time when the mother's desire was so much for his children. You know what? God made the airplane develop a fault. And it came down. And if you got such a burden tonight, let me tell you, God himself can bankrupt heaven. Come down and give the student Holy Ghost. 
You may be seated, sir. You may be seated. Hallelujah. May God give us mothers like that. Who, if the husband is not doing anything, if the husband seems like he's not concerned, step up, mothers. Step up. Be like John, Sarah with, uh, the, the, the mother of John Wesley. 17 children. But she could spend time with them in prayer. If the wife, husband is not doing anything, don't wait for the husband. Zipporah did not wait for prayer with the husband, with the children. She took the circumcised. And she did not care why the people were laughing or not. Because she was not supposed to do what she did. But she could see that the child was going to die uncircumcised. God was about to strike the place. Circumcise that child. May God help us, Isa. May God help us, Isa. Amen. Let's be concerned about our children. Amen. Like that woman, Sister Hetty. I spoke about last time. And I said she was offered money. Choose between two million or your children. And I said, if it was some of us, right now you are struggling to even find 10 pounds. What about if you are offered 2 million here and your child there? What are you going to do? But not that woman, brother. That woman said, I don't need the 2 million. I need the salvation of my children. Because of the burden that she had, the Holy Ghost came down right that minute. And my sister, if you can raise that burden for your children, the Holy Ghost will strike them right in this service. Amen. So if his coming was important, then it should be important to you and me. Because the disciples were important. I know people want to hear, receive your money, receive your car. No, not today. Maybe pastor will bring that one. Today it's another different day. I want people to get ready for God. Amen. There is a rapture coming, saints. Yeah. And you and me have got to be ready. Money will come and go. Prosperity will come and go. But brother, let me tell you about eternal life. Don't ever make a mistake of missing eternal life. These days we've got people who are concerned about material things. But when you go to that woman, that is very right, she was concerned about spiritual things. About eternal things. She said, I want my children to be saved. When Elijah was asked, what do you want me to do for you? He didn't choose a Bugatti. He didn't choose a, 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 a Lamborghini. He said, I want a double portion. Of the Holy Ghost. This is the time that we are living. It's time to apply the token or die. This is the time that you and me are going to be right with God. Amen. I know people are saying, what is he talking about? Brother, I am trying to get you ready for the rapture. One day you appreciate me at the day of judgment. You appreciate this service. I may look like I'm a lunatic. But one day you say, brother, thank God you told us the truth. How many remember that woman? That little girl was dying in the hospital. And they sent the pastor there. And the pastor was having a secret. He said, oh, it's okay, it's okay. He said, you deceive of man. I'm in this condition because you did not tell me the truth. And I'm not going to play around today. I want to tell you, sister, the way you are dressing, you are going to hell. Brother, the way you are acting, you are going to hell. Make sure that you are right with God in this service. Don't walk out of here the same. If you are living in sin, leave your sins right here. Leave your sins right here. I don't care whatever you're doing outside. I'm telling you, brother, keep on living like that. When you are wearing that skin tight and all the body is showing, men are looking at you and they're lusting after you. And when they're lusting after you, they're committing a daughter inside. And at the day of judgment, both of you are going to be judged together. Because I doubt that it's not between one person. Two. For presenting yourself. And I'm here to tell you, sister, if you are like that, change your way. Change your way, brother. You are not going to go to the rapture like that. There is nothing of this world that goes in the rapture. Everything of this world has got to remain here. Hallelujah. As we were talking last time in our church there in Derby. I've talked about it before. And I said, even you all of us have flown in an aeroplane. All of us here. We did not come by boat. Did anyone come by boat? No. Aeroplane. So you know at the airport there is a scanning system. When you've got something in your pocket, that is a flammable. You know, are not allowed to go in the plane. 
the alarm will ring. Stop you from going there. And I'm saying, brother, if you are carrying sins in your pocket, even though you might be holding the ticket, say, look, I've got my ticket right here. You won't go. Because what you're carrying is prohibited. The only thing that can make you go there is to let that thing down. That's why I'm saying, brother, there is no sin that goes there. There is no lust that goes there. There is no fornication that goes there. There is no hate that goes there. There is no grudges that goes there. There is no sin that goes there. If you want to go there, brother, let it off. That's why the Bible says, let us aside every sin that easily beset us. Because when it comes time to take off, brother, whatever you are carrying must be remain behind. We can learn from watching these natural things. The prophet says the natural always stop the spiritual. So you can go that ticket and say, I want to go. And you are carrying a perfume nowadays. Say, no, 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 we can't go there. The alarm stops you. But you can beat that system because it's of the world. But you can never beat God's system. You can never go, beat God's system. God knows exactly what you are hiding. He knows what you are doing at home. Because right now as we are here, everyone is a Christian. They know the language of a believer. God bless you, brother. God bless you. They know the language. God bless you. Oh, sweet, 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 sweet. But at home, they're living another life. And I'm telling you, brother, if you're living like that, let me tell you something when it comes to go there. Brother, I am afraid you won't go there. Because nothing of the world is going to take off. Nothing. If you think you're living and clean and you think you're going, you're not going. And I'm telling you the truth. You are not going. The truth has got to be said. It's not every one of us who's going to heaven. Some are going to hell. It's got to be said. I don't care what people think. I've got to say the truth. That truth shall set you free. It's not everyone in church going to heaven. We are not all going to the same direction. How many times do you get in the plane? How many times do you get in the train with many people? The train seems like it's going there. But some other people are getting off. Getting off. They are not going to the same destination. We might be in church, but some are with and some are with. Brother, this is a hard time. got to be said. I've got to say it. I've got to say the truth to wake the people up. We might be all coming to church here, but some are going to hell, some are going to heaven. Hallelujah. Some are going to hell. I'm not going to say every one of us is going. No, brother. I know people say, oh, brother, this brother is no compassion. This is compassion. That truth shall set you free. That truth shall set you free. Getting in the same train that we know we're going the same direction. Even Lot and his wife, Lot and his wife, married together. Many adversaries together. But at the day of judgment, the woman remained. The wife, the husband came out. We are not all going to the same direction. Wife, you need to have your Holy Ghost. Husband, you need to have your Holy Ghost. Don't rely on your husband's ticket. Have your own ticket. I will say it, brother. Husband and wife, have your own tickets. Say, because my husband is a man of God, so I'm okay. You are lying to yourself. Two will be on the bed. I'll take one, leave the other one. Brother, going to heaven is not a group affair. Going to heaven is an individual affair. You are not going to go to heaven as a family. You are going to heaven as individuals. As individuals. They were married together. Living every wonderful life. Anniversaries, just to dramatize this. Lord must have been seeing when church one day, like brother saying, Choose your wife. Lord received the message of the brother. And the brother said, Go and talk to the sister. And Lord was watching the sisters. And brother Kufawemba was here. And brother Kufawemba said, Brothers, Brother Lord, rush quickly. And brother Lord listened to Pastor Kufawemba and went to the sister. Sister, I need you. And they got married. Had children church. Grow together. Many anniversaries. We celebrate many anniversaries. But come time for judgment. The wife perished. The husband came out. What am I trying to say, brother? I'm trying to say it's an individual affair. That's why the Bible says, remember Lord's wife. Remember, we are being told to remember. That is not just going to be a family. Each and every one of us must be born again. Without born again, there is no going to heaven. You and me must be born again. 
not born by the natural means, but born by the Holy Ghost. Without being born again, there is no going there. I don't care how religious you are, how much you pay your offerings and your tithes. If you're not born again, forget about heaven. That's why the Bible says you must be born again. Because there is something wrong with your first birth. It's telling you, you must be born. Something wrong with your first birth. And you can never go to heaven with your natural birth. That's why Job cursed the day he was born. Jeremiah also cursed the day they were born. Because it's a cursed birth. So going to heaven, it's not about a church affair. Remember, Lord's wife. Does the Bible play with words? No. We are being told to remember. Wife, just because your husband is a man of God, is not your ticket that will make you there. Children, just because your mommy is a Christian, your father is a Christian, does not mean that you are going there. God is sons and daughters. He's got no grandchildren. I'm here to tell the little children around here, you must be born again. Children, do you hear me? You must be born again. Don't think because your mom is a Christian, your father is a Christian, you are going there. You must be born again yourself. I'm trying to go to my notes, but something is just dragging me. And I believe there must be something in here. There must be a need in the church. We are losing our children out there. They are going out into the world. You know why? Because we are not desperate enough for our children. Let's get to a place where we hang and thirst for the salvation of our children. That is the reason we got child delinquency. The prophet says it's because of parental delinquency. We are weak on our knees. When you're weak on your knees, you watch out your children will begin to get into mischief. Believer, be encouraged. Start getting strong on those knees. Start praying. Don't wait for the husband. Husband is doing, not doing anything. You do something about it. And brothers, I'm not excusing you either. Where are the brothers like Job here? Amen. Job who was concerned about his children. Amen. Amen. He offered sacrifices Amen. for his children. Amen. Not because they sinned, but per adventure they sinned. Amen. Where are those fathers here? Amen. We can't be targeting the wives only there. Where are the fathers Amen. who can pray and fast with their children? Amen. Who can sit down and listen to tape with their children? Where are those fathers? Where are those fathers? Amen. Where are those fathers who can say, let me sacrifice just a week, two times, 30 minutes with my children, just to pray together. We cannot just point to the sister. Fathers. God gave us an example of Job. He sacrificed. Per adventure, my children have sinned. Not that they sinned. Maybe they have sinned. Hallelujah. Amen. So that one tells us, Lord, that's the same thing. And the Bible says, two be on the bed. Take one or leave the other one. It's an individual affair. Don't ever think because your wife, she, is a, she prays a lot. Your husband, he prays a lot, you are going there. That's not it, brother. Let me just say this in a way children can understand. Children, if you go to the airport with a ticket, okay, I want children to understand also. You get the ticket. You don't have a ticket, right? You don't have a ticket. You go to the airport and you tell them, please, I want to go to Africa. I want to get a plane. I don't have a ticket, but I'm a good person. Will they allow you? But what if you tell them that I can, I, mean, I pay my tithes and I, I give offerings. Allow me to go in the plane. Will they allow you? That's the same thing with heaven. No matter how much tithes you pay, how much offerings you give, how much time you come to church, if you're not born again, there is no going there. Brother, I know how hard these things is. But I remember the prophet says, if you love somebody, you tell them the truth. Amen. Amen. I'm looking at faces. Some other faces are not smiling. But I'm not going to stop. If you're not smiling, I'm going to preach some more until you smile. Amen. If you're not smiling, I'm going to preach some more until you smile. Let me start by looking this side. Are you smiling? Are they smiling? If you're not smiling, I'll keep on preaching. I don't care how much you come to church. I don't care how much offerings you pay. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are not going over there. I am not going to stop. I can see the faces. I'll wait until they smile at me. If you are not smiling, I am going to go until you start smiling. 
Hallelujah. I'm not going to stop. Because God has given me mission to get his bride ready. Tell the bride the truth. I don't care how much you come to church. Because we are now used to coming to church. It's Sunday's church, 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 church. Everything is okay. It's not okay. What's the use of you coming to church every day and then miss the rapture? You have wasted your time. What's the use of wearing those long skirts, sister? And miss the rapture. What's the use, brother, when you stop all? We don't know what you don't cheat around and you still miss it. That's why I'm here to tell you, brother, sister. Say, brother, the only thing that can take you there is when you receive the Holy Ghost. I am not playing around with it. I'm telling you the truth. God, the truth shall set free. The Holy Ghost. Don't play with the Holy Ghost. Look at you all this week you've been in church. Losing, missing a lot of shifts. Come into church. And then you miss it at the end. What we have done. Sisters, you should have maybe wear your short skirt a long time ago. Amen. Amen. You should have maybe drink a long time ago. Amen. Don't come in here and lose and miss it. Amen. Don't come here and miss it. Amen. Are you hearing me, brother, sister? Amen. Don't come here and miss it. Amen. Don't. Sacrificing all those dresses, all those things, dressing and everything, and miss it. May God have mercy on us. That's why I'm not pulling, I'm not holding anything this afternoon. I'm here to tell the people truth. That brother, the way that you are living, if you keep on living like that, hell is awaiting. I feel like saying something. Somebody just told me to say something. You brothers, you are daily dealing with the world there. Let me tell you something. You're going to find problems out there. You're going to run into problems. I feel like saying it. You brothers who are doing this pornography, watching pornography, they watch out. You're going to run into trouble. Amen. When you walk away from Christ, it's not going to be easy. Problems are going to come your way. Didn't the prophet tell us about the sun? Hallelujah. That when the sun is in line with the earth, there is a restoration. Everything is moving all right. But when the earth moves away from the sun, Winter came. Ice came. What's up? Death set in. And I'm saying when you walk away from Christ, trouble is going to follow you there. Don't ever think everything is going to be rosy for you. You are going to run into trouble. Things might appear like they are moving all right. But later on, you watch. I felt like saying that. Abraham, when he left the land, he went over to Gerar. What happened? Gerar, his wife was taken by another man. And this was a man who in his land had power to subject five kings. No one could stand Abraham. But when he left the land to go, he feared. Fear took a hold of faith. Say you are my sister. This was a man who destroyed five kings. Great kings. But out of his position, he was powerless. He got into trouble. And this is what I want to tell you, brother. When you walk away from Christ... Don't ever think things are going to move all right for you. Things are going to be terrible. Hallelujah. I remember the prophet, when the prophet was talking about the man, a good Samaritan, the man who was beaten by thieves. Where was he coming from? Jerusalem. Going to Jericho. He was supposed to come from Jericho. Going to Jerusalem. Brother, when you walk away from Christ, you are going to find trouble. You are going to find some problems. Don't ever let somebody lie to you. That when you walk away from Christ, things are going to be alright. You are going to run into trouble. He was moving from Jericho, a cursed city. No, moving from Jerusalem, blessed city. Going to Jerusalem. That is why he caught some thieves, right? And they attacked him. Telling you, brother, when you walk away from Christ, like the prodigal son, he left his father's house to go out there. And out there, what did he find? He found problems. When Naomi left the land, what happened? She found problems. What am I saying to you, brother, sister? When you walk away from Christ, young girls, young brothers, and you begin to tell it, darling, with the world, watch out! Problems are coming your way. I'm not pulling anything. I'm just telling you the truth. Watch out, young girls and young boys. When you begin to flirt with the world, trouble is on the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't want to say this thing, but they're coming just here. I'm actually off my notes right now. But something is telling me just to stick on this one a bit. Young sisters, young brothers, 
when you are going out there and begin to fellowship out there, watch out. Trouble is coming. Amen. Just to, let me just drop something that will scare the little children. Even the adults. The prophet says there was a shepherd with a sheep that was broken leg. Amen. And they say to him, what happened to the sheep? He said, I broke it. And the people say, you are a mean shepherd. How can you broke this sheep leg? He said, you don't understand the story. It was not listening to me. It keep on straying into the world. And it was going to be eaten by lions. But for me to preserve the sheep, I've got to break the leg. And I'm telling you, brother, sister, you keep on doing what you're doing. God one day is going to break your leg. God one day is going to allow a disease. Prophet says God permits sickness for the correction of his children. One day you allow sickness so that you'll be on the altar praying every day. So that you can be in church praying every day. Hallelujah. This is what happened to Moses. When God wanted to meet Moses, God made, made a mistake to kill a man. And as Moses was running, that is when he met God. Some of you are here, not because you wanted to come to church, but the problems has brought you here. God has used problems to bring you here. And this brought you here so that you can meet with him. That's why, brother, you come to church. How I many remember the Syrophoenician woman? What made you come to Jesus Christ? The sickness of a daughter. Otherwise, we'll never hear about it. So some people in church here will never know about you. But God had to use some problems to drive you in church. So that you can meet with your destiny. Otherwise, you're not going to calm yourself here. God had to really bring a little bit of sickness to touch you. So that you can be in church. Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me. God has brought you here for an appointment. Let me try to go and I'll say, I don't know, saints, this is off my notes. I don't even know where I'm going to go to my notes or not. Okay. Are you happy? Are you angry at me? Are you saying, brother, keep on preaching like that? Are you sure? We're in church, we're in the house of God. Be honest. Hallelujah. So he said, I'm coming back. So we should be interested. And we know the first time he came, he did not come as a thief. He came to pay the price of redemption. Amen. And that's why we are here today. Because Christ paid the price. Amen. That was the first time he came. He came to pay the price of redemption. He went to the, cro to the cross and purchased it with his own blood. Hallelujah. And when he came there, he proved what he said. He said, I've got power to lay myself down. I've got power to raise myself again. He said, destroy this temple. In three days, I'll raise it up. He proved what he said. Brother, it's something else to say something, but it's a different thing to prove it. Christ said it, and he proved it. Aren't you glad you serve a God like that? That says it and proves it. Brother, if there was no resurrection this afternoon, where will our hope be? If there was no resurrection this afternoon, where will our hope be? But thank God for the resurrection. Thank God for the resurrection. Christ proved that when a man dies, that's not the end of him. Let me say, my sister Janet, when your grandma has died, that's not the end of your grandma. Christ proved to us that when a man dies, he lives again. She is somewhere waiting for you. I don't care how many people you have left, you have lost. There is, there are somewhere living right now. So if Christ has not raised from the dead, the whole creation has been doomed. There will not be reason why you and me should come to church today. We would have continued in our sins. But the fact that he rose from the grave, it was to prove to you that when a man dies, that is not the end of him. That is just the beginning of him. Oh, brother, you might have lost your loved ones. Let me tell you something. That is not the end of your loved ones. One of these days, they're going to be resurrected. I don't care. Maybe they've been eaten by lions. I don't care. Maybe they might have been grounded to a powder. But when he's coming, all those elements will come together. The lion will bring that flesh out. Those who have been swallowed by lions will come up alive. 
and a man dies, he lives again. So that was the first time that he came. He came to pay the price of redemption. He died on a Friday, resurrected on a Sunday, which is the reason why we go to church on a Sunday, because we are commemorating his, res his resurrection. Hallelujah. So he proved what he said. If he had not raised from the dead, there's no reason for us to be here. How many would have wanted to be in church? If Christ had raised, not raised from the dead, there is no need. Hallelujah. But thank God we've got an empty tomb tonight. We've got an empty tomb tonight. Amen. Amen. Buddha is there with his tomb. Muhammad is there with his tomb. But our tomb is an open tomb. How many wants to thank God with me? How many wants to praise God with me? That we've got an empty tomb. An empty tomb. Our Christ is a risen Christ. He is not a dead God, but he's a living today. Amen. Buddha is still in his tomb. Muhammad is still in his tomb. But when you come to Christ, he is lived again. And he's not only there, but he's living in you and me today. How many want to thank God with me? How many wants to give him a clap offering? How many want to thank God for Calvary? Want to thank God for the resurrection? Want to thank God for an empty tomb? There is an empty tomb in Jerusalem. Right now there is an empty tomb. That is when he came the first time. Hallelujah. They buried him. But he came out. I'm telling you brother. If you die with the purpose of God. Serving that purpose. You will be up in the resurrection. Amen. Some of us here might not come. May not make it that way. Some of us might be like Enoch. Enoch was just taken as he was walking. But there are some who are going to be taken from the grave. Hallelujah. But just make sure that you got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The prophet says, there is a story of two, two, two trees. And he said, these three trees look alike. But one of them was genetically modified, something like that. He said, you cannot tell the difference by just looking at them. But you can tell that the only way you can see the difference, bury them to the ground. The modified one rots and dies. But the one that is gemitized, it rots and come up alive again. It's telling you, brother, when you die without the Holy Ghost, no matter how many people are going to try to call you from there, you will remain there. Hello, so that's the first time. I hope you are catching what I'm saying. Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church? I'm going to take it easy because I believe that God wants me to preach this way. He does not want me to preach the other way, but he wants me to do it like this way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let me just go further here. So that's the first time he came. He came to pay the price of redemption. How many know that the, what the thief comes to do? Kill, steal, destroy. So the first time he did not come as a thief. is the second time he comes as a thief. The third time he said, I'm going to kill all Jezebel's children. And I'm going to destroy all who destroy the earth. So Christ is doing all these three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 3. You see what Christ said there. He said, I am there to kill Jezebel's children. And I'm there to destroy them that destroy the earth. So it's Christ doing all the three. But here now when he's coming the second time, this is where I want to, as I want to finish shortly. He said, I come as a thief. He said, behold, I come as a thief. Now the word behold means pay careful attention. It means to look up carefully. It means to observe and to catch what I'm saying here. Behold, I come as a thief. Hallelujah. What is he trying to tell us? He's trying to tell us three things. You should watch the way he comes. And what he's coming for. And the qualification, the requirement when he comes. So when he says, behold, I come as a thief, he's telling you that he's coming as a secret. Brother, the rapture is not going to be a public affair. The rapture is going to be a secret affair. When Christ comes, he's going to come in secret. He's not going to broadcast on the television papers. He's going to be in secret. And the prophet says, the prophet says, people will just walk into the tribulation. Thinking that the rapture has taken place. Say, Lord, why it's happening? We thought the rapture had come. The rapture will come first, walking into tribulation. Because when the thief comes, he comes silently. 
and quietly. So he said, behold, I come as a thief. Watch the way I'm coming. Watch, look at it very carefully. And blessed is he that keepeth his garments on when I return. The requirement. You must have your garment on when he comes. I'm telling the church, you must have your garment on when Jesus returns. Without no garment, you are not going there. Say, brother, what is the garment? The Holy Ghost. Blessed, behold. God does not play with words. Behold, watch carefully. Look, observe. I'm coming as a thief. Blessed are they. Blessed is he who keepeth his garment. My brother, my sister, do you have your garment this afternoon? Sister, do you have a garment of the Holy Ghost this afternoon? Brother, do you have a garment to the Holy Ghost this afternoon? If you don't have it, when it comes, it's not going to be a blessing. It's going to be the opposite. Cursed are you. Are you catching this, brother? I want the children to catch this. I'm not going to rush. I want the children to catch what I'm saying. Behold, observe, catch, watch carefully. Not just halfway, carefully. I'm coming as a thief. And a thief comes at a time which you don't expect. A thief comes at a time you cannot see. The only way you see, your furniture is gone tomorrow. But you don't see the thief. And that is exactly how the rapture is going to happen. Jesus was born on the earth, grew up, preached the gospel, and went and not millions, not even millions knew he was on earth at that time. But yet he was the very Messiah. He was right on the earth that time. And even the priest called him a Beelzebub. Telling you, brother, when the rapture takes place, it's not going to be a public affair. It's going to be a secret affair. Because the thief comes at that time just to take the bride away. Oh, brother, like Romeo did to Juliet. Some of these videos that we see online where people are in church and the rapture takes them and oh, they are closed. Remain. That's not rapture. Oh, the clothes, brother, why may suit to be there? Sisters, dress will be there, everyone. That is not the rapture. The rapture is a secret. That's why in heaven there was 30 minutes silence because it was the coming of the thief. Because they know heaven knows. No one knows except my father. That's why there was a half hour silence because it was the coming of Christ as a thief. Are we catching, brother, sister? So he's going to come as a thief. Didn't the disciples say about John? They came and said, didn't the disciples say, John shall come first, Elijah shall come first. And he said, he came already, he didn't know it. The rapture could happen like that. The prophet says, people will keep on preaching the gospel. Thinking they're getting people saved. People will still come to church. Yet the rapture has happened. Oh, may God help us this hour. May God help us this hour. God help us to be ready this time. Let that day not overtake us as a thief. Get the garment on. Get the garment on, my brother. Amen. Amen. He said people will keep on preaching the gospel. Baptizing people in church. And everyone say, oh, we're getting people saved. The rapture is gone. And the prophet says they will just walk into tribulation. And they will say, well, Lord, what's happening? We thought the rapture comes first. There are five, prophet said there are 500 million people, people missing on this earth. No one knows even, no, not even know anything about it. And the prophet says, one day sister will be walking. She will just say, I want to go to the shops. You won't see her, man. And people just say, oh, maybe she ran away with some man. She'd been raptured. Amen. That's what the prophet said. I'm trying to bring your people to a place where they become desperate with God. Amen. Sister, brother, it's not time to play church anymore. Amen. It's time that we must be ready with God. Amen. It's time that you and me have got to be ready. It's not time to play church. Amen. It's time to get your comments on. Hallelujah. Amen. Little children, if your mommy goes and your daddy goes and leaves you with all that property, what are you going to do? Leave you with all the house, knowing that mommy is gone in the rapture, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to have fun? Are you going to say, my daddy has left me a Lamborghini? Also, I've got all the money in the account. I'm trying to put preach children into a place where I need to see all the children right on the altar when we are praying. Children, they need to pray. Get right with God. Something is pressing upon my heart. And I'm concerned about these little children. 
They are just coming to church to follow their parents. They don't understand the importance of coming to church. They must be born again. They must receive the Holy Ghost. They must be saved. They just come to church because they say, mommy and daddy goes to church. Children, that's not it. If you're not born again, you will not go with mommy and daddy to heaven. I'm trying to put the children to a place where children begin to seek for God. Moses said, we don't want to leave our children. We want to take everything. We are not leaving even a hoof. And yet we've got children coming to church because mommy is going to church. Because daddy goes to church. From today, children, listen to me. If you are not born again, there is no heaven for you. I know my people say, oh, why are you telling our children this? They know a lot, these children. They know a lot. So it's better to tell them this truth than to tell them the other way. Children, get right with God. Don't just come to church to follow your parents. Don't just come to church to follow your father. To follow your mother. Come to church because you love God. When you come to church, receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because our children now is okay. Oh, it's church again. Oh, church again. You know with the accent. I'm sure you know with the accent. Church again. Uh, you know them. They don't know what it means. I want to hear the children saying amen, children. Amen. Children say amen. amen. I'm talking to you. When you come to church here, you're not following your mom or daddy. You need to be born again. Amen. If you're not born again, children, you will stay here on this earth. Amen. You want to remain here on your own? Then get the Holy Ghost. When you are having prayer, I want to see all the children here praying. I want to see all the children here praying. Because we are not playing church. It's time of the rapture. We need to be serious with God. Hallelujah. If you go to heaven and you don't have your children, are you going to be happy? Your child is not there. Your husband is not there. Who are you going to play with? Not there. We don't want jealous over there. Get right with God now. Wife, get right with God now. Hallelujah. Let me just give you a consolation. The prophet says, oh, that you ever loved. I have given you. So brother, all that you ever loved, they will be there with you. All that you ever loved, and all that ever loved you, they will be there with you. Your mother will be there. Your father will be there. Your auntie will be there. Your children will be there. All that you ever loved. Hallelujah. So children, when you come to church, know what you are coming to church for. Say, I'm not following mommy. Even if mommy does not come to church, I am going to go myself. Amen. 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 If mommy is compromising, I am not going to compromise myself. We need children to come to a place where these little children understand the importance of coming to church. That they are not just following mommy and daddy and say, it's boring, it's boring. No, no, that's not it. We want children to know that when a preacher stands here, they know what they've come to church for. They know they've got to receive something from God. Hey, something is just not letting me go to my notes. Amen. I don't know why. But I believe there must be a reason. Somebody's pulling. And there is a mother praying for her children, right? There is a mother who's been fasting for her children. And this is your prayer for you. Those little children. They will receive the Holy Ghost one of these days. Hallelujah. So the prophet says here, you will come to church. People keep on preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. And everybody say, hallelujah. Specials will be sung in church. The sisters will be here singing, oh, hallelujah. But the rapture is taking place. Hallelujah. There is nothing, there's not going to be a big difference outside there. You're not going to see a red cloud or something. It's just going to be, maybe the sun will even come in everywhere. The weather will even be nice. There will be snow. There might even be snow outside there. And all the ice cream vans moving around. Everyone jolly, but yet the rapture has taken place. It's not going to be something that you say, hey, I feel something. 
you to hear the, the, the magnet coming down. No, brother, it's in secret. How many remember the story of the magnet? It only attracted the metals. Not the aluminum. Mixed material. Brother, you will not go there if you are mixed with the world and God. It's no aluminum who go there. And there was another metal that did not come up. It was bolted to the ground. Brother, if you are bolted to the ground by the sins, you will not take off there. Nothing of this world is going there. Hey man. Prophet says, I was wondering when the metal shavings were attracted to the magnet, there was other which remained. The aluminum. I like what one of my brother said. It's a mixed, m- mixed material. Combination of iron and something else. Amen. You, it did not take off to the magnet. We're telling you, brother, you cannot go there with sin. Don't ever think you'll go there with sin. Never. And there was another iron which did not go up. And the prophet says, it was bolted down. You cannot go there with sins of this world. Nothing of this world will go there. Are you hearing me, brother, sister? Nothing of this world will go there. That is why you must be born again of there. Because the birth of here can never go there. You need the birth of there to go there. You cannot take your birth of here to go there. Hallelujah. Put the court. Listen. I want people to read us together. Brother Branham, a while ago, can you say that? When you say the church could go and would know. Yes, the Bible says it. They won't know nothing about it. It's a secret coming. He comes in secret and steals away his church. Takes it away like a book I read one time of Romeo and Juliet. He comes to get it. Nobody knows nothing about it. And here the videos are saying in church, people are just, and all the clothes are remaining. No one knows about it. That is not the rapture. The rapture of the denomination, yes, but not the rapture of the bride. These things have been revealed to us by the messenger of Malachi 4. We are a privileged people tonight to be knowing these things. Brother, imagine knowing those things and then be lost at the end. You have wasted your time then. God sending you a prophet in this age only to get you lost. Oh, my brother, it will be very, very miserable. The people out there know nothing about what we know. The seals have been made open to us. We know the revealed things of God. We know everything that has been hidden and has been made open in this age. Hey, man, we are privileged people. And then at the end, you miss it. It'll be such a terrible thing. What excuse do you give to God? God said, I sent you Elijah to prepare the bride for Isaac. Amen. And we miss it at the end. What are we doing? Hallelujah. What are we doing, saints? Nothing will ever be different out there when the rapture takes place. This screen will still be showing. Amen. Your workplace will still be open. The job will still be paying the pounds. Over time will still be going on. Don't ever think over time will stop because of it. Nothing is going to show. I hope people are catching this. Amen. I hope people are catching this. Saints. Oh, brother, if you are sleeping, just wake yourself up. Just wake yourself up. Say, this is not a time to sleep. It's a time to be right with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want people to fall down. The man who called Uticus, he fell and, and, and died. We don't want to be praying for people. Amen. We don't want to know that brothers will be praying for people because somebody has fallen in church because they are sleeping. Let's not be like that. If the brother is next to you, just wake your brother. If you love your brother, just wake the brother. Just hear what the preacher say. Anyway, just say God bless you to your neighbor. Amen. Just say God bless you. Don't miss your blessing, brother, sister. The prophet says that time when the pillar of fire come, it never come on sleeping people. It come on people who are alive and looking. And say, brother, sister, the pillar of fire was on you. Stand up and you receive your blessing. And the sister, imagine she was sleeping. Oh, wake up. The pillar of fire is on you. God does not play like that. God does not play like that. Say, oh, the pillar of fire is there. Brother, wake him up because the pillar of fire is on him. No, brother. It comes to the living. It comes to the life. 
not the ones who are sleeping. If you need the blessing of God, don't sleep in church. Hey man, we are here because we are serious business. When you want to attack the pillar of fire, be awake all the time. After all, we are not of them that sleep. They end up sleep, sleep in the night. That's why I said last time, if you want to sleep, bring your pajamas. At least people say, ah, this one, we know that this one is sleeping. But don't sleep in your suit. It's not good. You come from home with a suit and you're sleeping. With a suit, just bring your pajamas. Why am I trying to say, brother, we need to be serious with God. When we come to church, let's mean business with God. We are coming here to hear from God. Hallelujah. Even if the prime minister of England right now come here, you will sleep. But when Jesus comes here, people are sleeping. And they want to go to heaven. They are not taking it seriously. Hallelujah. Brother, if you see somebody sleep, just wake them up. Because we don't want people to have nightmares in church. We don't want to have nightmares. Okay. And, okay. That's what he said he would do, would happen. They went out somewhere. They, the, some girl made a mistake. She ran out. He ran out someday. They have been raptured. And they don't know nothing about it. Hundreds of them go every day. They know nothing about it. See, before that time happens, won't you get right with God? This is what Malachi 4 say. Before the time of the rapture comes. Why don't you get right with God, saints? Hey Amen. Why can't you say, Lord, I'm willing to lay down my sins. I know what I do when people are not watching me. I know the programs that I watch when people are not watching me. I know the numbers that I'm keeping in my phone when people are not watching me. And you brothers who've got a habit of hiding their password from their wives, you are not yet Christians. Hiding your password from your wife, what are you doing? What are you hiding? If you're a Christian, you don't need to hide anything. Your wife does not even know anything on the phone, you're just hiding the password. What are you doing? Hallelujah! It's church cleaning time. We need a revival. And there cannot be a revival without cleaning of the church. There's going to be a cleaning of the church. Amen. What are you hiding your password from? The wife, when the go, go toilet, the phone is in your pocket. Kitchen, the phone is in your pocket. And you're calling me that you're a man of God? You should be ashamed of yourself. Because that's not Christianity to do. We, are, we live a life, our life is in the open. Your phone can be lying there. Yes, I understand as a pastor sometimes, you know, it is to keep his things that people don't know. See, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about us believers. Your wife does not know anything about it. You make your own deals and the wife does not know. Amen. Let's not be like that, saints. We are not like the world. We are Christians. Amen. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm going there, but there must be a reason why I'm doing this. If you are like that, don't live a life like that. Amen. What are you hiding that phone for? Hallelujah. Toilet, you're with the phone. Amen. Sleeping, you're with the phone under the pillow. Hallelujah. The phone is under the pillow. When the wife just turns, you see the brother turning. Come on, let's not be like that, saints. We are believers. Don't hide that, phone, that password from your husband and your wife. We are Christians. Hallelujah. Even Christ, he said to us, we are his wife. He said, I've hid these things from outside there. I speak to them in parables. But to you, open. He has not hide from us. That's why he sent us Malachi 4. To open these things to us. Nothing is hidden from a believer. Nothing is hidden from us. Nothing is hidden. Everything has been made open. Because we are his bride. We are flesh of his flesh. Blood of his blood. He reveals these things to us. Because we are a part of him. But we are calling each other brides. And we are hiding. If you are hiding, let God hide all these things also from you. Put another one. I want to copy. And remember, yes, the coming of the Lord will be sudden. Secret going. You will come and take here like a thief in the night. And to think that if somebody all of a sudden, there is members of our family gone, and you are left behind. It should throw you into desperation. 
that by the grace of God, who will not left back behind. If there is anything, don't leave me, Lord. How many want to say, don't leave me, Lord? I don't want to be left here. When God takes away the Christian from here, this place will be so difficult to leave. How many want to say, Lord, take, have mess on me. I don't want to remain here when that happens. I want to make it over there. Put another one as I finish here. I just want to rush here. The next one here. It will be a secret because he said he would come. Amen. Like a thief in the night, he has already told us this. Then judgment will strike. Sin, plagues, sickness, and everything. And people will cry for death to take them. When the, when the judgment, Lord, why is this judgment upon us? When you say that there will be a rapture first. You will say, it's already come. And you didn't know it. God hiding himself in simplicity. Are you catching something? Telling you, behold, I come as a thief. And when he's coming, it's not going to be well known. People are going to walk in tribulation. And they're going to say, Lord, why are we in tribulation? When you say the rapture has already taken place. And you say it has already happened. And you didn't know. I hope people are catching what I'm saying. I hope people are getting the message. Are hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church. I told you I'm not here to say receive your house, receive your car today. I'm here to say receive the Holy Ghost. Get the garment on. Like the other one. And the first thing you know, you are going to find out. You say, well, isn't it written that we should have a rapture? And it will be like it was by John the Baptist. They said, isn't it written in the scripture that there should be first, there would be a liar's come. He said, a liar has already come and you didn't know it. One of these days when tribulation sets, you will say, wasn't there supposed to be a rapture first? And it will be it's already passed and you knew nothing about it. It's come like a thief in the night. I tell you, it's time for believers to trim their laps. Get on their toes. The calling time is at hand. Are you hearing, brother, sister? Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that keepeth his garments on. So a thief comes in secret. And the thief comes to steal. And when Christ is coming, he's going to steal specific people. There is no thief that breaks in a house and steals everything. He's got specific material that he is targeting. And when Christ is coming, he is not going to just check any church member. He's got specific people. And these are people with their garments on. That's why I say, blessed I come as a thief. Blessed is he that keepeth his garments on when I return. So if you see a thief come in your house, he's not going to steal dirty socks, dirty jeans. He's going to go for value. Something that has got value. And let me tell you, when Christ is coming, brother, he is not coming to take church members. He is coming to take people with value. What is the value? The Holy Ghost. That's what puts value into you. Because you are born in sin, remember? You are born without a value. Sin, shaped in iniquity. Come to the world speaking lies. Nothing good about you. The prophet says you are born whipped already. Bound for hell. No value in you. You are not rapturable material. You are not worthy for a thief to steal. But when you get the Holy Ghost, greater becomes he in you than he that is in the world. Their value goes up higher. And you become rapturable material. You become stealable material. When you put value in your life. But if you don't have that value, Forget about going there. Are you catching this, brother, sister? There is no thief that steals dirty socks. There is no thief that sticks second-hand clothes. Thief goes for value. And let me tell you, brother, about expensive things and precious things. They are covered. You go to the diamond. It comes from the deeper in the ocean, covered with rocks. You take the pearls. They are in the ocean, covered. The expensive things are covered. And let me tell you something, if you want to put value, be covered by the Holy Ghost. 
That's why he said when he comes, he comes. Say the thief, blessed is he that keepeth the garment on. You must be covered to show that you've got value. Sealed by the Holy Ghost. Are you catching this, brother, sister? Every precious material comes covered. Covered by the earth. Under the ocean. Because it's precious. And if you want to be a rapturable material, stealable, rapturable, you've got to be covered by the Holy Ghost. Spread the sketch over me, Ruth said. That's what you've got to do, brother, sister. Without that Holy Ghost, there is no going there. As we stand up to our feet, I want to finish the race as we are standing. I hope people are catching the message. You've got to have value. Value is very important. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet says Abraham was a silver dollar. And Lot was a penny. Hallelujah. And if you look at it, who was with God? Abraham. Because of the value that he had. Because when a thief comes, he does not steal pennies. Are you catching, brother? There is no thief who breaks in the house to steal pennies and cents. When a thief breaks in the house, he goes for silver dollar. He goes for material things. So if you are a, sil- a, 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 a penny, forget about going to the rapture. That is why when those three angels appeared, two of them went to Lot. Elohim did not go there. I stayed with Abraham because of the value. And it was Abraham who received the promised son. It was Abraham who had the body change. Hallelujah! He said, brother, how did Abraham become, become valuable? Genesis 17, when he met El Shaddai. He received transfusion power. His name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. God put a part of his name in his name. God added H to his name, which made his name valuable. Increased the worthiness. That's why Abraham could receive the promised son. Brother, those things are not just written for us to know. It's for a purpose. God does not play with the word. Before he can become valuable, he had to receive that H name in him. The name change. And I'm saying believers here will never receive the Holy Ghost. You are not yet valuable. If you die like that, there is hell waiting for you. The only way you can become rapturable material, get that value within you. Get that value within you. How many want to say, Lord, give me value? You might have been coming to church all this time. You might have been performing your religious duties. So did Judas. Judas lived with Jesus all the time. He was the first one in the church and the last one out. He was the best believer, Judas. But look at him, he missed it. Let's put value in our lives. When the thief comes, he's not going to go for anything that has got no value. The prophet says he went to a museum. And in that museum, he was looking at how much a body of a person weighs when it's been crushed. And he said it was only 84 cents. Which means you and me, we are not valuable for the thief to steal. Are you catching? We are not valuable for the thief. But what puts value in you when you receive the Holy Ghost? That's why he said, I will take away the stony heart out of you. That, va- that, that, that is going to value. And I will put my heart with my spirit with you. And I will give you my spirit. And I'll, God is adding value, 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 value. Until you become rapturable material. I hope people are catching what I'm saying here. If you're catching, say, hey, man. Value is very important. Say, learn from nature. Every natural thing teaches about the spiritual things. It types the spirit. When a thief comes in your home, watch out. He's not going to steal. If you don't have any expensive thing, he's going to leave it. Hallelujah. What makes a brand, what makes a perfume expensive is the brand name on it. When you are sealed with the Holy Ghost and been branded by the Holy Ghost, your price goes high. You see, you can take a perfume without a name. You can sell it for one pound, but put a name. Gucci increases the price. And if you are branded with the Holy Ghost, it increases the price. Hallelujah! Brother, I'm trying to drop to a people that people, even young people can understand. If you take a trainer, let me go to the children. Air Force. You know Air Force? Jordans. The children know what I'm talking. This is the language for the children. If the trainer's got no name, will you buy it? Children, will you like it? Come here, come here. I want to ask the boy. I feel like asking the boy. If a trainer has got no name, will you buy it? What, what trainer do you like? 
Air Jordans. Air Jordans. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. It's because of the label that is on it. That what makes it expensive. And this is what I'm trying to tell you, brother, sister. You put your trainer here, that has got no name, and put a Jordan Air Force here and leave it outside. You'll find out that the Jordan is gone. But the other one has been left. What am I trying to tell you, brother, sister? I'm trying to tell you the importance of value. The importance of value is the name that puts value. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive a part of God's name. You take his name. You are married to him like a husband. You take your wife's and your husband's name because you are identifying with your husband. So when you've got the Holy Ghost, you are identifying yourself with God. When you take his name, it makes you expensive. That's why I say, sister, don't be in a habit of walking out naked. You are testifying that you are cheap. Expensive things are covered. Can I hear hallelujahs from the sisters? Hallelujah. Expensive things are covered. So when those girls are telling you, sister, well, just wear a mini skirt, say, oh, I'm not that cheap. I'm expensive. Expensive things are covered. I hope people are catching. So that's what it is. You take your husband's name. That makes you somebody. That's where Abraham and Sarah, Abraham, Sarah, God had to give them an edge. Part of Elohim name. And they became rapturable material. Then Elohim could now visit them. Then that thief could now come. Brother, sister, that's what I want to say to you. How many wants a thief to come for them when he comes? Value. The Holy Ghost. Your body is worth 84 cents. And 84 cents is not enough. Let's put the last the script that I want you to put. The code that I want you to put. It's a, let me see from here. So just give me a second. Saints. I want somebody to see this one. Hold on a second. Are we together? Hold on. Yes, it's a... Three witnesses in the court. Three witnesses. Is it the one? I think next after that, I think. It starts with, I say this with reverence. Yes. I say this with reverence. Gifts and callings are without repentance. There, there is a gift in the church of discernment. That's true, you see. But a prophetic gift is ordained before the foundation of the world. To come forward. That will never be until I die. It will go from me to someone else, you see? But now, let's do it together. That does not take away the, the, so the Holy Spirit is the, so without the Holy Spirit, you are not raptured for material. I hope people are catching what I'm saying, brother. I've tried to talk in a way that little children can understand, the adults can understand. Without that name of Christ on you, you are not going to the rapture. Then the last scripture that we were just reading, put another one. It's a scripture there. It's a, keep on going, I'll show you. It's, I think it's, put another one, please. Next one, please. Yes, that one, Acts chapter 12. That's, that's what we're going to end by. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking for it. Yes, thanks. Hold on. Yes. And when Herod would have brought him forth. No, before that, there's a court. Before that, there's a court that I want to show before I go to the scripture here. Yes, it says, it says here. God creates mystery of how it's a secret. Can you see that one? He kept it secret. Nobody knew nothing about it. Even the angel did not understand it. He did not reveal it. That's the reason under our seventh mystery. When the seventh sea was opened, there was a silence. Jesus, when he was on earth, they wanted to know when he would come. He said, even the son himself does not know it's going to happen. God has this all to himself. It's a secret. And that's the reason there was silence in heaven for a space of half an hour. And seven thunders uttered their voices. And John was even forbidden to write it. The coming of the Lord. That's one thing he hasn't revealed yet. Of how he will come. And when he will come, it's a good thing that he doesn't. Therefore, the entire Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ in Christ. Now that scripture, I want you to understand he hasn't revealed it, but in types. So I'm going to show you a type where he's talking about it. Acts chapter 2. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold again, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison, and smote Peter on the side, 
and say, raise up, saying, arise up quickly. The thief comes quickly. And his chains fell from his hands. And the angel said unto him, get thyself and bind only thy sandals. And he did. And he said unto him, let's read together, cast thy garments and follow me. Brother, if Peter had refused to cast the garment on himself, he was not going to come out of the prison. And this is what I want to bring the brothers. I'm closing. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are not coming out of this world. You are remaining here and perish with the judgment. That's why it was written here, get thyself the garment on and follow me. The angel, if it was not important, the angel would not have mentioned it. But he's telling you the importance of putting on the garment when he comes. If you want to come out of this prison, this pest house, for that place over there, you've got to be wearing your garment. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. How many remember there was a man who was found in the wedding supper without a garment on? And he said, hey, you, what are you doing here without a garment? He said he was speechless. The prophet says he called him friend because he was a message believer. Church, message believer, who know the seals, but without the rope. That is dangerous, brother. How can you know the seals and know the mysteries and yet not having the rope? Oh, brother, as, as the singers comes, as the musicians comes, we want to pray today, saints. We want to come to a place where people go to seek with the Holy Ghost. How can you be a message believer? God has sent you a prophet, revealed all these things to you, showed you the importance of the wedding garment, and yet you don't have it. Amen. It was in the evening time when the garment was required. Even Eliezer, when he came, he came with the garments. All these are shadows and types. This man was right there. He said, I've made it. But he did not have the garment. But he was a message believer. Understand all the seals. Know all the mysteries. Know church order. Everything about the message. But he was not asked about the message. What are you doing here without the garment on? That is the question I'm going to ask as I close. What are you going to do? What are, you, what are you going to do in heaven without the garment on? And what are you doing in church here without the garment on? How can you manage to sleep properly at your house and say, I'm sleeping, I'm enjoying my sleep, when you don't have the garment? Don't you realize it's very important? It's a dangerous thing to be. Sleeping all right, driving 70 miles an hour, not having the Holy Ghost. What are you doing? Speeding in the motorway and feel comfortable and yet you don't have the Holy Ghost. What are you doing? I'm trying to bring a people to a place where people will become desperate. Say, Lord, I don't want to leave this place. Let this Easter be a red letter day for me. Let this Easter be from that time. The Bible says Enoch walked with God after the birth of Methuselah. There was no history of Enoch walking with God any other time but after the birth of Methuselah. Which means Enoch's walk before he was raptured was documented when it started. It had somewhere where it started. If somebody had come and said, Enoch, when did you start walking with God? Enoch will point you, when I had Methuselah, that is when I started to walk with God, before he was raptured. And I want to say, brother, before you are raptured, you are supposed to hear from that time. You are supposed to have somewhere you can say from that time, I've never been the same again. If you don't have that time, I'm afraid you will not be there. That's why it was put there for Enoch. He walked with God after the birth of Methuselah. Not before. Which means Enoch before was not walking with God. But came a time when he began to walk with God. And the prophet says, I'm so glad I associate with people who can point back to the spot and remember that from that time, something happened to me. I used to be drunk. I used to be a fornicator. But that day when I met God, something happened to me. Do you have that, sister? Do you have that experience, brother? If you don't have it, the altar is open this afternoon. We need to pray for our children. And I want all children to come and also pray. Children, don't worry about mommy. You pray for yourself. We must have a time where you can look back and say, you know what? I used to be like this. 
but something changed in me. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and God took him. Before, Enoch was not working with God. And for Enoch to walk with God, the nature and God's nature must agree. How can walk together except they to be agree? So there was a time Enoch nature and God nature were not agreeing. But then there came a time when they began to agree. You must hear from that time. Amen. If I can ask brothers, sisters, do you remember? Do you have a time? For young children, old children, where you can look back and say from that time. I used to be a drunk. I used to be like this. But from that moment, I used to be very disrespectful to my husband. I used to treat my wife like nobody's business. But one day when I met the light of God, something changed in me. You go back to Jacob, to Job. Jacob will tell you, I used to be a liar. But one day when the pit of fire came, from that time I began to walk with the Lamb. Amen. My walk changed. And that's why my, my soul, my, my thigh is dislocated. Because of what happened that day. You are supposed to come to that time, sir. If you don't have it, make this Easter. Say, Lord, I need to change. If you can play us a song, is I want to invite people to come to pray. Hallelujah. Anyone who needs the Holy Ghost, you come to the front. Anyone who knows that their life is not right, you just come and pray. God will hear you this afternoon. Anyone who really needs the Holy Ghost, come to the front. Hallelujah. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about what people say. Brother, you are changing your destiny this afternoon. Say, Lord, I'm tired of living under privilege. I want to make it to heaven. I don't want to remain here when the rapture takes place. Lord, touch me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So say, Lord, I'm tired of the way I'm living. Give me a place. Give me a time. From that time, Lord. Give me somewhere, Lord, where I can say from this day my life has never been the same. Touch me, Lord. I'm tired of playing church. I want value in myself. Give me value, Lord. God is still here. He can still hear you. Hallelujah. Brother, if you, God can hear you this afternoon, He can give you a desire this afternoon. You're still in the business of filling with the Holy Ghost. He can still fill with the Holy Ghost this hour. He can still fill with the Holy Ghost this hour. He is in the business of filling with the Holy Ghost. He is in the business of changing people's lives. He is right here this afternoon to change your destiny. Say, Lord, I'm tired of being a church member. I'm tired of just going to church. I'm tired of just calling myself a message believer. Give me the Holy Ghost. He's here. Brother Buff. Can you call me this, Brother Buff? As we pray, as we wait, Brother Buff is coming. And then anyone who needs the Holy Ghost after, you just remain and Brother Bob will finish. Then me and Pastor will pray for you. Because we remember, and Brother before I met Brother Paul, when Paul laid hands upon them, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. So anyone who needs the Holy Ghost, when the prayer is finished, you remain there. We will pray for you. And anyone who's never been baptized, why don't you get baptized? In the correct name of Jesus Christ. Friends, this is the time. We want to commit ourselves before the Lord, knowing that God answers prayer. Before I pray this morning, looking at the children, I also said in my heart, I want these children to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I sat down, I listened to the tape, and coming here, and hearing the message today, how Jesus is here. Our Lord Jesus is here. He was leading us up to this point. Let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. 
We thank for your, for your grace and for your appointed time. Lord, you are God who touched my heart this morning. Looking at the girls, looking at the children, the Heavenly Father, desiring the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And purpose in my heart, Lord, that I want them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And oh Lord, I come into your house this morning. I hear your word, Lord, from thy throne of grace. How you speak to us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, O oh Father, for your grace. For all the souls bowed before thee, O oh Lord God. You said you knew them before the foundation of the world. And you said it's the Holy Ghost that is searching as the magnet seek, seek the Heavenly Father. Oh Lord God, we thank you for your seeking this morning. As a hen, Heavenly Father, brooding for the children, Heavenly Father, how you called us this morning. How you called the children this morning. How you called every heart in your holy presence. Oh Lord God, for the things that we have done wrong, Lord. For what they have done long, wrong, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness, Heavenly Father. Oh Lord God, we want our hearts, Lord Jesus Christ, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh Lord God, be it a battle a gasha upon gasha this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every demon, every lie of the devil, we chase it and deny it in the name of the Lord Jesus and accept the promise. As you say, oh God, you are more willing to give us, oh Lord God, than we desire for it. Oh Lord God, each our Heavenly Fathers have come, Heavenly Father, at the altar before Thee. Oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, you see everything, Lord. May you grant their hearts desire, Lord. Oh Lord God, you said all oh, the days of ignorance. You wing it, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. We thank you for the price that you pay at Calvary. We thank you for your blood that cleans us, that keeps us clean. Oh Lord God, may none, Heavenly Father, in your holy presence of your seed, oh Lord God, fail to receive the gift that you have given, that you have promised, oh Lord God, in show in your word, Lord Jesus. Oh, the promise of our day. We look up to thee, Lord. We don't look to the mountain, Heavenly, from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from thee, O oh Father. We come unto thee, O oh Lord, as a church. And you say to oh God, if two of you agree as touching anything, we agree, Lord, on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord God, you say you grant it. You say, ask and to be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. They are before thine throne of grace, seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord God, you said us being evil, know how to give, give good gifts to our children. Oh, Lord, thou art a super parent. Oh, Father, we glorify your name. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. We praise you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We praise you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for preparing us for the journey, for the rapture, Lord Jesus. Oh, we glorify your name. We thank you for the sacrifice that you did at Calvary. Oh, Father, we glorify before the foundation of the world. We were in your mind, Lord God, and oh, God, purposing us in this day, oh, Lord, to realize, Heavenly Father, what you have done for us, Heavenly Father, for our children to realize, Lord, that they bypass the sea of an into the this body that you change, Lord, their nature into the nature, Lord, that is like unto thee, Lord, that is the mama eagle who come down one day, Lord God, and call us, Lord. Oh, Father, we glorify your name. We praise you. We honor you. This Easter, Lord, this Good Friday, oh, yesterday, Lord Jesus Christ, and this Easter, Lord, today, oh, Lord God, you are never dead. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You lived in William Marion Penham and left us a message. Bring us a message, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. And all those online who may be kneeling down where they are, Lord, may you reach them, Heavenly Father. You are never, Lord God, Heavenly Father, guided by distance. Father, may you touch them. May they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, may they hear from that time experience. Oh, Lord, may we all have a gush upon gush. May every soul that is crying before them, that is praying, Lord, that is requesting, Lord, may you answer their prayer, be it sickness, Lord. May you come down, Lord Jesus, to change their body as you gave us souls of double redemption for our body and for our soul. 
Lord, we come unto thee. We glorify your name, Father. We thank you for your unchanging word. We thank you, Lord, that you have come, Lord, not only in word, but in power and demonstration of the Spirit. May you help us, Lord, even those who are still in the world. May we be together, Lord, with a hand out to reach out so such as should be saved. May we be true witnesses in this day, Lord, in this area in Doncaster, Lord. Father, may we be true witnesses. May you call the bride one by one until the last one, Lord, come in. When all the saints around the world who are crying unto thee, oh, Father, may you hear their cry. May you answer, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we praise your holy name. Thou art mighty, the mighty conqueror. Oh, Lord God, we glorify your name. There is none like thee, O Father, the creator of the heavens and earth. Oh, Lord, the all-sufficient one. We glorify your name, Lord. We praise you, thanking you this, Father, oh, for what you have done for us this morning. We pray, Lord Jesus, even as we come this afternoon for a feast, Lord, may it be a feast with the King. Oh, Lord God, we glorify your name. We thank you for your unchanging word. Thank you, oh, Father, I glorify your name. Thank you for the past that you have given us. Thank you for the officers of the church, for every member, Heavenly Father, of the bride of Jesus Christ. You say it in your prophet, Lord Jesus, in our prophet you have given us in this day, that there will be an invisible union. May it happen at this very moment, Lord, that your children, Heavenly Father, be born into the kingdom, to be united with them and to be united with each other. If there is any sin or me of omission, Lord, may you forgive and cleanse. Lord God, we come before thee. We glorify your name. Thanking you, Father, for what you prepared for us this morning. We glorify your name. We praise you, Lord. May you pray, prepare the minister this afternoon, Lord. May we see beyond the budget skins to hear you, Lord, to see you, Lord, speaking to us in this day as you did in the days of our prophet, Lord Jesus. May you lay him aside, Heavenly Father, and speak through mortal lips and help us, Lord Jesus, as you already forewarned us. Oh, Lord God, that the hardest thing God has ever to do is to have one more to believe for another. Help us, Lord. Your grace is sufficient to believe, Heavenly Father, the message that the message that you have given, you have prepared us this afternoon. We pray that it's this after these 10 days, the service is Heavenly Father. The, the service is Heavenly Father. We pray that each one, Lord, none be wanting. Oh, Lord God, but that will Heavenly Father, we have that problem that your brother had of just rejoicing in thee, Lord, giving glory, praise, and honor unto you for all that you will have done to us. Oh, Lord God, comfort those who are in mourning, Lord. We commit them into your holy hands. May we help them, Lord, that they mourn. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we hope, knowing, Heavenly Father, that one day, Lord Jesus Christ, we will meet together and rejoice, Heavenly Father, in that great jubilee. We thank you, Lord for imparting eternal life to us this morning. We give glory, praise, and honor unto thee. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thou art living, Lord. We glorify your name. There is none like thee, Lord, who works, Heavenly Father, in an unusual way, who works, Heavenly Father, without the eyes seeing, Lord, but the spiritual eyes. We glorify your name. There is none like thee, O Lord. We glorify your name. May you answer, Heavenly Father, and grant each one the just desire. We thank you, Lord. You are our Father, our super parent. We glorify your name. Thanking you, Father, for all that you have done to us. May there be a hunger in our souls, even those filled with the Holy Ghost, to feast upon the word, Heavenly Father, to grow thereby, to be adopted, Heavenly Father, to the places that you saw them before the foundation of the world. And we lay our feet and our feet, every spirit that may stand in their way, Heavenly Father. But, oh Lord, may the Holy Spirit that has pulled us together, Heavenly Father, in this feast, Lord, guide them, Lord. Thou art our guide, our comforter. We look and trust in thee, Lord, and help us to believe. Oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh Lord God, the same yesterday, today, and forever, we look up unto thee, Lord. We believe you, Lord. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. May you bless each one. Oh Lord God, even those 
playing instrument, Lord, and those song leading. Lord, may you pass them not by, Lord Jesus. May all you cram their hearts desires to the Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord Jesus Christ, to reverence thee, to honor thee, Lord, as you have, Heavenly Father, come to us this morning. Thank you, God, who never misses your appointment. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, praise, and honor be given unto thee forever. May our life here on earth radiate thee, Heavenly Father, wherever we are in our homes and workplaces. Oh, Lord God, God, on the road, Heavenly Father. May we express you, Lord Jesus. May we not be ashamed of the gospel. Forgive where we have been ashamed of thee, Lord. But may we be by your grace, by your spirit, Lord. Be an expression of Jesus Christ. Undiluted, Lord Jesus Christ. The voice that you spoke, the message that you have given us, Lord. May we be an expression of thee. Every verse, every scripture, every part, Lord, that you want us to fulfill in this day. We commit ourselves into your holy hands, Lord. And we commit each one, Lord. May you help them, Lord Jesus Christ, to speak through them, Lord. Oh, Lord God, you said we shall not worry what we will say, what we will speak, Lord Jesus. May you help us, Lord Jesus Christ, that we be reverence of the end. Recognize your presence with us, Lord Jesus Christ, in us, Lord, until that day, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we give glory, praise, and honor unto thee. Thank you, O oh Father. Glory, praise, and honor be given unto you. The Lamb of God that was worth that took the book. Oh, Lord, we glorify your name, Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord, even when in our guts, Lord Jesus Christ, when it's Heavenly Father, it's hard times, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you help us with the Holy Ghost to live every way that you've given us in this day. That we be, Heavenly Father, a bride without spot or wrinkle. Oh, Lord God, we want, we love you, Lord Jesus. We want to be with you, oh Lord. Wash us by your blood. We commit ourselves unto thee. We give glory, praise, and honor unto thee. Oh, mighty conqueror, we praise you for conquering for us this morning and subjecting every spirit under us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray with you. Amen. Anyone who wants to have the Holy Ghost, just raise your hand and we'll pray for you. If you can put uh, the great physician, please, on the and if you can just raise your hand, then we know we'll come and pray for you. Anyone who needs the Holy Ghost, they said, why is Peter, Peter laid hands, Paul laid hands on them, they receive the Holy Ghost. So if you want the Holy Ghost, just raise up your hand and we'll come and pray for you. Pastor, let's pray. Brother Kufuemba. The great physician. Great physician. Yes, Lord, in sin, so Sweet 
sweetest name, sweet, sweetest name, oh, one more doubt, sweetest come, roh, eh, Sing that chorus again as we raise our voice to God. Oh, sweetest note, sweetest note in Sarah, sweetest name, sweetest name, oh, Your many sins are not forgiven. Your many sins, your many sins are receive your request in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever your request is, believe that God is able and that he has granted you your heart's needs. Amen. How many have been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. We thank God for speaking to us. We would like to close this session and come again at 3 o'clock. We have a short break. The sisters have prepared something. So I will just ask Brother Kaziranga again to just close this session with prayer. And we just have a refreshing there, and we come back at 3 o'clock. But we'll close this session. If other people want to remain praying, we'll ask them to just remain here. Amen. And we'll close the doors as soon as we go out. Maybe when we go out, let's just go to the hall there and greet each other. In case others want to continue praying, they pray here. Remain with the atmosphere of prayer here while we go out to the other room. Let us pray. Our dear mighty God. Father, we want to thank you this afternoon, my Lord. We want to thank you, Father God, for your presence. And we know, Lord Jehovah, your prophet taught us that where your presence is, the miraculous always happen. And the greatest miracle we desire, Father, even as we heard from your word this morning, is for us, Jehovah, Lord, to know thee, in the power of thine resurrection, we pray, Lord, and we want to thank you to know that all those, Jehovah, we have come before you, Lord, with that hunger and thirsting, oh, Jehovah, 
to know you, O oh my Lord. Father God, you have revealed yourself unto them. And Lord Jehovah, we thank you even for your servant, our brother Juma, whom you have used this morning. And we pray, Lord, may you restore the virtue. May you bless him and his family. And may you continue, Father, to use him, O oh God. Father God, for the feathering of the gospel. Lord, as we take a short break now, we pray, Lord, may we ponder on those things, Lord, which we have heard this morning. For it's life, O oh God, unto us. Even as you said in your word that the words you speak to us, they are spirit and they are life. May it be so, Lord Jehovah. We thank you, Lord. We commit our precious pastor Mkanganwa into your hands, Lord. May you continue to guide and lead him, Father. Lord, as he oversees the work you gave him, Lord. Jehovah, to oversee in these end times. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your name. Be with us this afternoon. We come back in expectation, Father, in the atmosphere to receive, in the atmosphere, Father, go to see your word made flesh in our hearts and in our lives. We thank you, Lord. May glory and honor be given to your precious name, for you are worthy, my Lord. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you for the inspired prayer. I ask the song leader to just dismiss us with a song and we come back at three o'clock. I see.